Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is a bit of a gloomy topic. Um, it's not something that is preferred to have to know about, but if you're a snail keeper, I think that you should know about it. Um, just so you know what to do if this ever does happen. Now I will start this out by saying that this is for land snails and not aquatic snails. So one of the things about garden snails is that you can't really take them to a vet. So that means any ailments or anything that might be wrong with your snail, we as keepers would have to just figure that out and figure out how to if we can help it. So I'll be going over some of those things on my channel uh, coming up. And the first one I wanna start with um, are mantle issues. So things like mantle tears and mental collapse. So I'll be talking about the least concern and then I'll move up to the most concern with mantle problems. So I'll be going over how to identify it, uh, what causes it, how to treat it, all of that stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So first things first, what is a mantle? Now I'll try to show a picture here, but normally the mantle is extended to the lip of the shell. So the mantle is a muscle that holds the snail's body to the shell and is responsible for keeping the snail's body shape in the shell. So if you ever see that not looking normal, it can be a pretty big concern considering how important the mantle is. I do also wanna start this off by saying that it is common for the snail's mantle to become puffy or like swollen looking, and this is totally normal. A puffy mantle is normal for mating behavior. It kind of tells the other snails that they are ready to mate. Um, I believe it's also a sign that they're about to lay eggs. I just don't want anyone to see a puffy mantle and immediately start freaking out, thinking that their snail is having mantle collapse. So let's start with mantle tears. Mantle tears in land snails are pretty easy to fix. Um, they're not too, too bad. With mantle tear, snails seem kind of unaffected by it and they still move around normally and eat normally so it is of lesser concern. So treating a tear is actually pretty simple. So you just want to take the affected snail and put them in a separate enclosure like a small container. Um, you don't want one that's very tall. Uh, this will restrict any movement and will help eliminate any strain on their mantle so that the tear can heal. The only other thing is to keep this environment clean. Uh, more clean than you normally would just to avoid infection, but uh, yeah, you know, offer food normally. You don't really have to do any extra steps, but that is pretty much it for a tear. Like I said, it's pretty simple to fix um, and it shouldn't take too long. They typically heal on their own relatively quickly. So now the condition for the mantle that is more severe than just a tear would be mantle collapse. And with mantle collapse, there are more steps. It is more devastating to the snail and it can be very disheartening to go through the healing process for the snail and the keeper. So it is uh, more drastic, but it is also not fatal most of the time for land snails. Hey guys, editing Ollie here. Um, I just kind of realized I didn't explain this extremely well. In this case of mantle collapse, I am talking about like less severe mantle collapse. Severe mantle collapse is almost always fatal as of right now. Um, and euthanasia would be the preferred thing to do in that instance. But um, like I said, here I am talking about kind of like less severe. Even then the success rate isn't super high. We are still learning a ton about mantle collapse and um, I don't wanna get anyone's hopes up or try to convey the wrong message with this video. But even with less severe, uh, perseverance seems to be key. However, if you do feel like your snail is worsening in condition and is just absolutely not going to make a turnaround, um, it is your call on euthanasia. That is something that does need to be considered through this process and doesn't need to be like forgotten about. So. I do also talk about severe mantle collapse a little bit um, later in this video, so I will kind of talk about how you can tell the difference, but like I said, I didn't make it super clear off the bat like I should have, and I just wanted to pop in to make sure that I wasn't conveying the wrong message here. Yeah, anyway, back to the video. 
So mantle collapse is where the mantle partially or fully detaches from the shell completely. The best way I've seen it described is kind of like a sock covering the snail's body. So mantle collapse can be difficult to heal and can take a lot of time, which is the biggest reason a lot of people end up um, losing hope but I do encourage you to keep going with it and really try because I've heard in most cases, perseverance really pays off with this. So the snail will struggle a lot to move around, to carry their shell. There's a lot of strain. It just seems very difficult for them. The other thing that does make this a little bit more devastating is that the snails typically don't eat when this is going on. So obviously that can cause all kinds of problems when your snail just won't eat. So I'll just let you know right now, it probably won't eat for a while till it starts to heal. The snail will also have a hard time retracting back into its shell. So drying out is a big threat to the snail during this. It is also believed that mantle collapse put a lot of strain on the snail's lung. So breathing might also be difficult for the snail. So how would you go about treating mantle collapse if your snail happens to have it? Um, so just like with tearing, you want to take the affected snail, put it in a separate enclosure, same whole thing, um, not a lot of climbing space, you don't want any pressure on, on their mantle, you want them to have less activity. Uh, once again, keep it cleaner than you normally would to avoid infection. You do want to keep the enclosure much more humid than you normally would. I've heard people recommend uh, misting like every three hours if possible. You really want to stay as wet as possible since they have trouble retracting back into their shell. That is one of the only ways they're not going to dry out. You will want to gently place the snail on the food if possible um, to encourage eating. Um, once again, they'll probably reject this, but it's, you know, always good to get them as close to that food as possible. Now, when you do this, don't, like, if they're out, don't, like, pick them up by their shell like that because that can hurt them. Try to kind of scoop them if possible. Um, you don't really want to put any strain on that, on that, uh, shell because that can make the collapse even worse. Same with, uh, tearing. You don't want to pick it up like that. You know what I mean? This is really all you can do as far as I read um, to heal mantle collapse. I heard it does have a decent success rate. Um, but yeah, there's not much else you can do, unfortunately. Um, this can take a few weeks uh, it's for them to even start eating and start looking better. Um, I wouldn't move them back into their normal enclosure until absolutely necessary. And just try not to lose hope. Um, a lot of people said that they thought about euthanasia a lot during this process. I don't think that you should completely forget about euthanasia. I think that if it gets bad enough and, you know, you really don't think it's going to heal and you've given it, like, a lot of time, um, that's still on the table. That is your call to make. But, um... I heard that perseverance is kind of key with this to helping your snail survive mantle collapse. Now it's important to note that if the snail is completely detached, meaning it's like everything is out of the shell, that, that can be much more devastating and euthanasia may be considered with that instance. I'm not really sure how you would fix that, I'm not gonna lie. I really don't know if that can be fixed. I couldn't really find any information, so if you do have any information, um, let me know in the comment down below so that other people can see that as well. Um, I might make a pinned comment for that, but, um, yeah, this is mostly for if it's not fully out of the shell. So, what causes mental issues? So, we don't really know everything about mantle collapse or mantle tear. We're still learning a lot about it, but we do have some, some theories to what causes mental collapse. So the possibilities include, but I'm sure are not limited to, a fall or a hit that somehow damages the muscle. It could also be muscle atherpy from old age. Over vigorous mating is um, thought as well, as well as picking up your snail incorrectly. So what I mean by that, uh, I'll demonstrate, obviously not with a real snail, but um, I made, I made this thing. It's a blueberry snail. So I'll be kind of demonstrating with my blueberry snail here. So essentially what you don't want to do is if your snail 
This is really hard to show on camera. If your snail is like, you know, hanging out, you don't want to go in and pick it up just like this. That's really bad. Um, you definitely do not want to do that um, because what you're doing is you're putting a lot of strain on that muscle, especially because most of the time snails don't just come up that easy. Most of the time they're hanging on with their foot. And if you pull up like this, it hits a lot of strain on the mantle, which would be right there. So you don't want to do that. Um, instead, a lot of the time is what you want to do if you pick up your snail is touch the foot right here. Um, and a lot of times that makes them um, unsuction. I don't know a better word for that, but it makes them like lose suction and they'll kind of let go generally. And then you can kind of take your finger and scoop them a little bit, still support their shell, but you just kind of like that. So that's how I recommend picking them up. If they're not awake, you can just pick up them. Like if their body is not out, then you can usually just pick up their shell without any issue. All right, guys. Well, that was pretty much it for today's video. I'm sorry. It was a bit more of a downer, but I figure this information is very important, um, especially considering that it seems just to happen. Like there's not anything wrong with your care. I didn't really see much online. I saw a little bit in forums. I saw a couple of websites. Um, I took personal accounts from Facebook and I don't think there was actually anything I could find on YouTube. So I figure this might help some people. But yeah, it's good to note that if you are going through this right now, I'm so sorry. Um, I couldn't imagine. I've never actually been through this myself and that would just be so gut-wrenching. So just stay strong. Um, I believe in you and I hope your snail gets better. But yeah, let me know in the comments if there's another topic like this you want to hear about or any other snail questions you have. Maybe I'll make a video out of it. As always, give this video a like for the algorithm. Go follow me over on Instagram. Links down in the description below as well as my art account. Link is also in the description below. Subscribe to this channel if you're into this kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye.